Hello, thanks for watching another episode of Rio's How To. My name is Simon Gorza, Rio Brand Manager, and today we're going to talk about how to fish an intermediate line. I guess the first thing is to talk about what is an intermediate line, because a lot of people don't really know what an intermediate line is. And when you go fishing, people say, oh, ca you're catching on intermediates today. Well, an intermediate is a line that sinks. It sinks quite slowly. It sinks about one and a half to two inches per second. So that's about the sink rate. And usually you can tell what an intermediate is when you look at a box, you'll see that this is abbreviation WF6I, the WF weight forward six, that's a six weight. And the I at the end tells you it's an intermediate. So if it doesn't have that I, it's probably not an intermediate. It could be a floating, it could be a sinking, but the I tells you it's an intermediate. And as I said, there's, uh, it sinks about one and a half to two inches a second. So they keep that sink rate in mind um, for now, because I'm going to come back to that. We make a couple of different sink rates and colors of these um, intermediates, and there's a reason for it. So this one is a clear intermediate, which is called Aqualux, and you can see that the front end is just clear. And that's great. It's really good in very, very clear water, right? You don't want your fly line visible with a fish swimming around your line. So a clear, completely clear intermediate is perfect for when the water is really, really clear. But out here, as I look at the water here today, I see there's a lot of suspended sediment and pieces of weed that are chopped up and there's lots of daphnia, which are water fleas, actually swimming around the water. So there's a lot of more like murk in the water. And when that happens, I much prefer the Camelux version. And you can see the Camelux one here. This is a Camelux intermediate. It's got lots of different colors, but it's a camo line. And I think that camo color blends in a lot better when there's a bit more suspended sediment and there's more murk underwater. Uh, I seem to catch more fish that way when, it's, when I'm fishing these lines. But certainly when the water's really, really clear, I much prefer the, uh, the clear version of that. As I said, the line sinks about one and a half to two inches per second. Let's call it two inches per second. That means if you cast a line out and you let it sink for six seconds, you count the depth as it's calling, you'll know that that line's about a foot down. And if you want to get it to sink two feet down, you let it sink for 12 seconds and you know that it's about two feet down. So that's a good way of controlling the depth of the line. Now that's all very well when the line is just sinking on its own right, but then you retrieve your line. So one of the things you've got to remember is that your speed of retrieve is going to affect that depth. So if I cast it out and let it sink to two feet and then fish it as fast as I can back, really fast, then the current will plane it up and I will no longer be two feet. I'll be up to a foot or six inches or two inches, depending how fast I fish it. And then if you cast it out on the opposite end of the scale and you let it sink for 12 seconds, so you know it's two feet down, and then you just microscopically crawl a couple of nymphs back, that line will keep sinking. It could be down five or six feet by the time it comes back to you. So there's no magic line that's just going to sit and suspend and stay at two feet. You've got to adjust your speed of retrieve to maintain that, and that's just experience. So bear that in mind. And then the other really nice thing about the intermediate is that when you get out there, even if the fish are near the surface, some days you're going to find there's a big old chop. It's just rough. And then those days, a floating line is very, very, very hard to fish. It's very hard to keep in touch with your fly because your line's undulating over the waves. It's very hard for you to retrieve the fly. So you might pull six inches here and the fly doesn't move six inches because the wave, there might be a bit of slack or it might pull two feet because of the line's tightening and a fish might grab it in the middle of a trough so you have no tension, you don't feel it. So in really rough conditions, I absolutely would fish an intermediate, even if I want to fish close to the surface because I can adjust my speed to keep the flies close to the surface, but because the line's under those waves, I have total tension. So it's a great line when you have a lot of roughness, a lot of wave in there. So that's the second use of the intermediate. And generally speaking, as I said, it should be a second choice of line. Like today, there's quite a bit of brightness. There's a bit of sunshine. There's no fish rising. So I would probably start right now. I'd probably go out there with an intermediate and fish some nymphs or some coronamids, some buzzers uh, out there as my starting point. But one of the best applications of fishing an intermediate is what's called the washing line. Now the washing line, I'll take some explaining here, but I'll show you in a second. The washing line, imagine the intermediate sinks and I've got my leader. And the very front of my leader, I attach a buoyant fly, a really buoyant fly, not a dry fly buoyant, way more buoyant than that, a foam fly or a styrofoam type fly. And there's this pattern developed in the UK called a booby. And you can see it right here. It's got two foam eyes. You can see why it's called a booby. Um, and these make it really, really buoyant. 
And so when you put it on the front end of a leader and your leader sinks and your, eventually your booby goes underwater, then you have this very straight line between your fly line and your point fly. Now between that booby and your fly line, you attach flies. You attach nymphs or coronamids. And depending on the regulation, sometimes you can fish two or sometimes you can fish three. Here we can only fish two flies. So I'd have my booby and I'd have one nymph. If you're allowed to fish three flies, you have your booby and you have two nymphs. What's nice about that is that if you want to slow retrieve to imitate a true nymph swimming or a coronamid swimming, it doesn't keep sinking. So you can stay in that surface area because the booby holds your line up and that's what the washing line is. You have your nymphs and coronamids just tracking at this lovely three feet depth or whatever depth you want to control it at. And that's what the booby holds it up there, the washing line. Without the booby, with just a nymph or a coronamid on the front end, it, you have that slow retrieve and everything keeps sinking deeper and deeper and deeper and you take the flies outside the zone the fish are feeding in. So that's a, an unbelievably good technique is this washing line. And that's really particularly applicable to the intermediate line. And a last thought on that is a coronamid or a buzzer or a midge pupa is the pupa of a midge. Midges fly, adults lay eggs, eggs sink to the bottom. Eventually they hatch into little worms, little red worms called blood worms. That's the larva. The larvas pupate into a pupa. And when it's time to hatch, those pupa squiggle. They swim up and drop back like this. They, they take a journey going up and dropping back, up and dropping back until they get to the surface and hatch out. And the path that true coronamids swim in the water is vertical, not horizontal. So one of the best things you can do when you're coronamid fishing on a washing line, and I've kind of set one up here, it's gonna be hard for you to see it, but I'll just kind of show you, is that off my tippet ring, I have hung a coronamid about a foot down, but it's a weighted coronamid. And that is the crux of this thing. This one is tied with green wire heavy wire to make it weighted. That means it'll always fit fish vertical. I've also got coronamids here, like this one is a coronamid with a, be a small bead on the front end. That's another way of weighting your coronamid. Because if you weight it, it'll always hang vertically with a slow enough retrieve. An unweighted one will tend to swing up and fish much more horizontal, which is not as natural. So I get an awful lot more fish fishing coronamids on a washing line with these weighted coronamids, just so they hang vertically down. So there's a really good tip about intermediates. As I said, it's a very, very useful line. Make sure it's the second line you buy. Make sure you always hit a lake with an intermediate. You're going to have a much better success rate than if you just take a floater. Um, that's really most of there is to intermediates. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to row out there. There's a couple of little extra tips I'm going to show you out in the water. And uh, hey, let's see if we can catch a fish while we're at it as well. All right, we'll come out here. And I want to show you that setup, right? It wasn't very well described on shore, but here is the washing line. I've got the booby hanging down here. And right now, about four feet from the booby, I've got a tippet ring and hanging off the tippet ring, I have my weighted coronamid and that's what keeps it vertical, that weight. So that's a washing line. You don't have to have the weighted coronamid to have a washing line. You can have a nymph or a regular coronamid, but that's what the washing line is. And then about six, eight feet from my coronamid, I've attached my leader to my intermediate line. When I was on the shore there, I was talking about counting the depth. Well, that's all very well if your line is sinking. But one thing about an intermediate is that they are very slow sinking. And so when you make your first couple of casts, what you'll notice, probably for about eight or ten casts, is that the line floats. See, the running line floats. That doesn't help you on your counting the depth thing. So a great tip is put your rod underwater, give a couple of hard tugs like that, that gets the line breaking the surface film, and now you start the sinking compound. You can't count down now five, six, seven, eight, and then you start your retrieve. So if I'm fishing coronamids on a washing line, which I've set up here, I'm just gonna start with a nice steady figure of eight and then work the fly back to me like that. If I'm fishing streamers, I'm gonna fish it fast, but always those first eight or 10 casts, you'll find that line floats. So just get your rod tip underwater, give it those tugs and get the line sinking. And then you're in a much more effective fishing zone. The other tip I want to mention is actually going to help you catch more fish. And that's always going to be a good tip. And what that is, when you cast your line out and your first few casts, there's that floating running line again. So I give my tugs, rod underwater. Now I start my counting the depth thing is make sure you retrieve with your rod tip down just under the surface of the water like this. And I'll tell you why, because this is a sinking line of some sort and your flies are underwater. You're only going to feel the grabs. You're not going to see anything. So it's all about a touch, a feel. 
I'll feel these so much better with my rod tip down there and a tight line between my rod tip to my fly than if I was sitting back in my chair and my rod tip was up and I'm lazily fishing like this. And there's a problem because that curve hanging from the rod tip here is going to create lots of slack. So the softest, subtlest takes, you're not even going to know they're there. Oh, I didn't get a take all day. You might have had 20. So keep your rod tip down and go through whatever retrieves are, whether they're strips or slow figure of eights, but always keep that rod low, just under the water, and you'll feel more grabs and you'll get better hook sets as a result. One thing I'd like to show you is there's this white little blob, about an inch long on the end of the fly line, about 15 feet from the front. And it's not a mistake or an aberration, it's actually something we put in, it's called a hang marker. And the hang marker serves one purpose if you're a beginner, and another purpose if you're more an experienced angler. And if you're a beginner, what it serves is the purpose of when you're stripping a line in, because it's an intermediate, it's underwater, and you don't really see where the end of it is, right? Like a floating line, you can see how far away it is. Because it's a sinking line, you don't. So a lot of people don't quite know when to make the cast. <laughs> so if you strip the line in until that hang mark is really close to you here, that tells you it's time to pick the line up and make the cast, and you don't strip it too close to you to get the line and the leader inside the rod rigs. But the other reason, if you get more into lake fishing and you fish a lot of sinking lines, is there's a technique called fishing the hang, hence the name the hang marker. And fishing the hang is something you should do at the end of every single retrieve, whether you're fishing nymphs or coronamids or streamers. And what it is, is you strip your line to the hang marker, and here it comes. Once it gets to that spot close to your finger, you stop stripping and just lift your rod and hold it at an angle of about 45 degrees and watch the hanging line from it. And the reason for that is that often when you're retrieving the fly, fish will follow your fly. And if you just cast, you'll see a boil behind you and that signified the fish was really interested but didn't take your fly. So you would have caught that fish if you'd fished the hang. So you strip the line in, lift up, hold, fish the hang, watch the line, uh, four, five, six seconds, something like that. And if it doesn't twitch or pull away from you, that's the time to make the cast. So that's what the hang marker is all about, is about knowing where the cast is close to you and make that last cast or knowing when to fish the hang. So intermediates, that's a little intermediate thing in a nutshell, right? You've got to get your line underwater with a tug. You want to make sure you choose the right color according to the conditions up there. And above all, get out there and try fishing that washing line thing, because that is such a deadly technique when fish are feeding on chironomids or on nymphs. So hopefully you picked up a couple of nuggets from that. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching another episode of our how-to. And if you enjoyed this one, check out, there's a whole bunch more of them on realproducts.com.